what's up this is your girl ashby from the no advisory show here with another episode of reality wrap up okay so let's get right into this basketball wise reunion or should i say the lack thereof a reunion so of course the reunion starts with guess what jennifer is not here surprise surprise I think I knew that Jennifer was not going to come to the reunion. I mean, after all, she was pretty much put on blast about those receipts that she had and never was able to present to anybody. Yeah, so the fact that she's not at the reunion is not surprising. She did an interview with Charlemagne, Angela Yee, and DJ Envy on The Breakfast Club this morning. And she had some pretty interesting things to say. She was there? And she did say that she had no intention of getting physical with you. So you didn't feel safe. They said you sent an email through your lawyer saying that you did not feel like it was a safe uh, place for you to be because you did feel like the whole season you were set up. So I did. And I just want to clarify something because they made it seem like I sent the email last minute. The reunion was being filmed on a Sunday, and my attorney sent the letter on Friday. So it was not a last minute thing. They knew that I wasn't coming. Mm -hmm. Would you have felt more comfortable if there was no tables there? <laughs> she talked about how in Amsterdam, when the table was thrown at her, no one called her to see how she was doing and to see, you know, about her after that whole situation. And she just said there was pretty much nothing to be said. She didn't feel the need to be at the reunion. And she sent a letter through her lawyer saying that she did not feel safe. She felt set up and she would not be attending the reunion. So that part of the reunion, reunion was cut out. And Jennifer was a pretty big part of this season of Basketball Wives. So moving right along to Kristen and Cece, two people that are at the reunion. As you may already remember, Kristen is married to Cece's boyfriend's son. Did I get so, that right? Cece's boyfriend is Kristen's husband's dad. Okay, I think I got that. So right. Kristen was able to shed a little bit of light on what was going on between her and Cece, where the problem was this whole season with this tension between the two it just always seemed to be a tension and um Kristen while talking to Malaysia she divulged that you know CC hasn't been by to see my daughter CC or her boyfriend which like I said is Kristen's father-in-law hasn't been by to see um Kristen's two-year-old daughter so I can see why she's upset with that, but I think she's channeling that anger to the wrong person. You need to be upset with your father-in-law. He hasn't come to see your granddaughter, or his granddaughter. Now, that is Cece's boyfriend, but she is just the girlfriend, and she and it's not really her biological grandchild, so it's just like she doesn't probably feel as though she can make him do something that maybe he just doesn't want to do. It just is what it is. And she also mentioned that, you know, whenever they go out to eat, her uh, husband mentioned that, or her boyfriend mentioned that she he's sick of paying for Kristen and her husband whenever they go out and no one ever offering to foot the bill for them. So now I do think that was a conversation that maybe Cece and her boyfriend had in private. And I don't think that he meant for Cece to go back and tell Kristen so I'm pretty sure that started, started up some more drama at the house. But it's just like, this whole season I thought Kristen was kind of blowing Cece to the left because she was just trying to get cool with the rest of the girls and they kind of felt a way about Cece with that whole comment about them not having jobs or whatever that she made. So I feel like Kristen, it just looked like Kristen was like, okay, so I want to get in with these girls, so... I'm not going to be as cool with Cece, even though she and I have history. Just so I can kind of gain a relationship with Evelyn, Shawnee, and Jennifer, who I know they don't like her. But I think there was some other underlying issues, and I think that's one of the reasons why uh, Kristen and Cece kind of fell out towards the end of the season. Kristen showed Malaysia some text messages about Byron from Cece. What did they say? Basically, the text message said that um, Byron didn't want to do birthdays, Father's Day's, Christmas, anniversaries, no holidays with 
Kristen and his son anymore because they don't pay. Gotcha. CC, why? Byron wanted me to tell his kids. It was basically because he felt that he didn't want me taking care of and paying for everything all the time. He wanted me to tell them, her that. Why would he, as a grown-ass man, because send that's his what girlfriend he to tell his son? That's through his wife. That's what he her told me. doesn't make any sense. Did you question that? Did that seem odd to you? Yeah, why would you because deliver that message? Out of nowhere. The relationship Kristen have, and I have had over the years, yeah. something pops up, I will text her right away. This wasn't Byron, this was you. Yes, yes it was I you. was texting But her. you're blaming no, no, I'm saying him. it wasn't, you didn't do this because Byron had sent you on a mission. You did it because you wanted to do it. I wanted to tell her what he told me. But tell the truth, you did it because you wanted to, not because Byron sent you to text me that. He, eventually, he would have wanted me to tell you. <laughs> eventually, you started this conversation by making it sound like all I did was no, do what Byron said. Have they come to see uh, Kenzie? They have not come to see Kenzie. Do you plan to? Well... Yeah, absolutely. But when it comes to seeing the grandkids, Byron runs the show with when we see them, what we're doing, and all of that. You're acting I, like you only do what Byron says. No. I know this is tough, and we all know relationships are hard. But I, I think we should move on now. You know, it's important a lot of the times to keep family business inside of the family because when you start talking to other people about family business or bring other people into your family business, the whole thing just gets messy. And Kristen and Cece's whole situation is exhibit A of that. So, I don't know. Cece, you kind of look dumb up, up there on that stage. I mean, Kristen pretty much shut it all down. Look, Cece, you tried to turn a little storyline into something that would last you all season. It didn't even last you all season because at the end of the season, we barely even saw you. So... I mean, this season really gave us nothing besides the meat and potatoes of it, of that table being thrown by Malaysia. Basketball-wise, I'm sorry. I think you guys have ran your course. Okay, so we finally get to Tammy and her whole thing with Evelyn. So, as you guys know, they have been going at it since Tammy first stepped foot on the scene. Her and Evelyn have been going back and forth. And I think Tammy right now is just to the point where she's just like, you know what? I've taken a lot from you, girl. Now, Tammy hasn't been exactly the angel in this whole thing. But I feel like coming in, the girls did look down on Tammy. We're not even going to lie about that. Evelyn looked down on her. Jennifer, all of them looked down on her. And I felt like Tammy at the beginning always felt like she had to be in attack mode. And I think once the lady saw like, hey, she doesn't back down. She's a tough woman. They kind of started to befriend her. So Evelyn and Tammy, they've just always had this contentious relationship. They've always kind of butt heads. So they were getting to their whole tip this season where, um, you know, the situation with Tammy making the the um, statement about o Chad Ochocinco um, and him beating Evelyn's ass. Now, Tammy made a statement whenever Evelyn said something and she just was like, okay, you know you was the one that instigated that whole shit with Ta Chad and you the one that made him pretty much hit you. And it was this whole big thing. People were saying she was victim shaming and all this and all that. Tammy should not have said that and she even said on the reunion she reached out to Chad, his family and apologized for anything that you know, any old feelings that may have been brought up by um, her making that statement, which I thought was pretty big of her. She should have done that. But we can't act like these ladies don't hit below the belt. I mean, that's, that's just true tea. They hit below the belt at every chance that they get. So Speaking of hitting below the belt, they're going at each other about not being able to get pregnant, miscarriages. Evelyn said that Tammy's eggs are fried and she can't have kids. And she even said that she, Tammy told Evelyn that, or Tammy told Evelyn and Shawnee that she was unable to have kids. Like she doesn't get a menstrual cycle anymore. She's pretty much done in the kid department. And Shiny kind of said um, she doesn't recall any of that being said, which I think she was lying. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, Shiny, come on. I like how you like to pick and choose 
what type of you know what what you're gonna get into i don't think that's fair at all like just like y'all wanted uh jennifer to just keep it real and be honest shawnee you do the same thing even though i think this is probably the last season of basketball wise but you do the same thing if it's something that you want to present to the group instead of dropping bugs in girls ears why don't you do the same thing and and do what you told jennifer to do say it yourself because you're no different than Jen Jennifer in all actuality because Jennifer did this exact same thing. She was trying to drop a bug in Malaysia's ear about the whole Evelyn and Shaq thing. It's no different than you trying to drop bugs in all these girls' ears about whatever that you want them to say on television. Like, come on, Shani. So anyways, Tammy and Evelyn... They're going back and forth. I mean, they're just dig, dig, dig. And Tammy finally says, you know what, bitch? I've been doing this with you for the past five years. Like, I'm tired. That's literally how her body looked. She's like, I'm tired. I have other things going on. Tammy is doing other shit with this Bonnet Chronicle. She's getting ready. Tammy's on her. She's working. She's booked and busy. So... This little basketball wife, she, I think she was she was cool. And she already didn't even go on the trip to Amsterdam that they do all the time. And just this season, she's just been withdrawn from the group. So I think she pretty much got her little coin for this last little season and was like deuces. And that's exactly what she did at the reunion. She chucked those deuces and she just walked off the stage. And that pretty much wraps up the reunion. Once she left... They said, hey, we were just about to present you and Reggie's package on, you know, the whole birthing thing. You guys trying to give birth, Reggie going shopping for the ring. The whole shebang that's been going on this season. They were getting ready to present that package, but Tammy was like, I'm done. She was tired. Tammy was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And she put on her flats, honey, and she left set like, I'm out. And, yeah. That was the it. That was it. <laughs> that was all they had to offer. I mean, Jennifer didn't show up. Now Tammy's gone. I mean, what the fuck else is there to talk about? OG and Malaysia, they had their little beef this season. Or OG and um, Kristen. OG and uh, everybody pretty much had to be. But don't nobody care. Shiny, it's time for you to gracefully bow out. Basketball Wives was cute while it lasted, but... It's done. It's over. And I think this reunion kind of wrapped everything up nicely. Like, you guys can all go back to the house and just go on with your normal lives. I mean, you guys are all professionals, right? 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 Well, that's all I have for Basketball Wives Reunion. It, it gave us nothing. Um, hopefully, it doesn't come back. And, yeah. That's all I got. And if you guys haven't done so already, make sure you go to your App Store, your Google Play Store, and download the TuneIn app. There, there it is. Where is it? Where is it? Where's TuneIn? I'm sorry. Where's the TuneIn app? There it is. Download that TuneIn app so you can listen to the No Advisory Show every Thursday from 4 p.m. To 5 p.m. on Power 104.4 FM. Download the app, guys. Come on. And as usual, thanks for tuning in, guys. And that's a wrap.